Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the weekly Delphian meeting. <clears throat> so today we'll go through our regular market update. I'll show you where the uh, start of the earnings trades and you know, um, tracking those, you know, we'll show those on a weekly basis, <clears throat> show you the results, what's going on. Um, then we had uh, Sudhir had some um, back tests he wanted to show people. And I think after that, Joe is gonna talk some inflation um, type numbers if we have time. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's get started. All right. So from last week, the state's pretty stable here with the eights. Um, <clears throat> you know, market pulse supply did grow a little bit. And I think you know, I found some new kind of research I was gonna show you on the Fed, uh, at least explain things in the, in the past. <clears throat> it's not really forward looking, but um, it shows uh, some changes. I thought it was pretty interesting. It explained a lot to me um, on why things bounced up last week so um you know, overall i'm sorry so got people joining so we'll get into the market pulse here and then go through our spx russell analysis and then talk some other stuff for the fed for the market update so market pulse <clears throat> you know, last week we're at 87 had a not a huge drop, but decent drop, not a big gain, um, you know, overall. Um, but obviously something to keep our eye on. You know, you see we're doing a lot of, you know, swerving back and forth, you know, year to date. You know, basically since this, uh, let me do, sorry, I clicked the wrong one, year to date. <clears throat> you know, we've been pretty much bearish the whole time with, you know, minimal, you know, this kind of March surprise. <laughs> that uh, I don't think many people saw, um, but you know, since then it's just been, you know, you know, pretty bearish overall. Um, with just you know waves <clears throat> where things will drop and then you know uh, pullbacks is kind of a normal uh, bearish market so far. Um, you know, with eight sevens, you know, state eight and state seven, for a lot of symbols are doing that right now. <laughs> um, you know, on the on the flip side, a bullish market, you know, it's going to do one two one two. So, just getting a lot of those eight sevens, eight sevens. Um, nothing big since that. You know, a couple of weeks ago we had those big spikes <laughs> for the uh, the new lows. Yeah, we're still, you know, new lows are still above highs. Um, you know, if I just pull out the highs and put them back in, you can see, you know, it's just a flat line on highs. So, um, you know, we get these lulls and then we get spikes. Hard to say, um, you know, when the next spike will be. I would, I would guess there'd be another one, <laughs> but hard to say at this point. But overall, yeah, we're still very, um, very oversold. You know, we're not even <clears throat> close to 30. We're still 10% away um, for the bullish, you know, getting over 30, which would be pretty much like a neutral market signal. Um, so that's kind of the bullish bearish. Just take a quick glance at state one, state eight. <clears throat> see similar pattern we did make uh, you know the bullish bearish we had pretty much the same high um here we got a little higher on the state eights up to i mean 70 that's a crazy number uh overall but state ones are <clears throat> really low i mean five you know pandemic low type numbers um we pull back, let me see if I can get this. I mean, down here, you know, we're at two, three percent. So, I mean, we're down to <clears throat> we're on five, very, very bearish. So, um, so just, you know, 
some of the watch for. Um, you know, we're not seeing much change, you know, between these big spikes and dwells <clears throat> on the lows. Um, we seem to be, you know, getting a little larger in magnitude. Um, you know, these first two were, you know, 12, 15. Now we're up to around 2,000 on these spikes. So things are, uh, seem to be getting a little, you know, the earthquake tremors are, seem to be getting bigger. So let's look at SPX here. So get my annotation tool here. So obviously that key level we were watching that target three down here <clears throat> was a really good support. Um, so that bounced way up above you know, our other kind of critical level at 3,800. So, you know, we just have to see if this thing holds, you know, I think we're basically on that 3,800 level. Um, so that would be something to watch, obviously, in the next you know, day or two. Can we hold above there or not? Um, I, I would err on the side of bearishness at this point. Um, you know, unless the Fed is doing something um, to help prop these up. I don't think that's going to continue, but I will show you some of the um, data that I, I found on the Fed website, <clears throat> you know, that they were helping assets during this period here. So, um, so really, you know, still in state eight, well, um, well above the, the average days, which is 31. <clears throat> so really, you know, we have to see, you know, if we can, if we break below this 3,800, you know, this uh, target three is going to be critical if we can get below there and hold. Yeah, we had <clears throat> a couple of ranges and I'll pull this up on the next chart here. Let me, uh, annotation tools are not the easiest thing. Um, so this is a 4,200, here's a 38, and then this would be a 34. So, you know, we're currently right above our 38. So we had a nice few days down here below. You know, I think the Fed stepped in, <coughs> you know, from the analysis I did, um, at least for this week, to push things higher. You know, obviously the 10 year dropped significantly after the Fed announcement, but now it seems like <clears throat> we're coming right back down to this, you know, 3,800 level. You know, before, you know, we've had, you know, breakouts, you know, down below and up above. So, you know, it's just a matter of, you know, where this thing's gonna settle. Um, you know, this one got tested quite a few times <clears throat> down here before it finally broke. Um, so, you know, whether it can hold that 3,800 level, you know, is gonna be, you know, whether we're in this range here or if we actually move down um, to the uh, 38 to 3,400 level. So that's the kind of <clears throat> key things off that chart. What I wanted to show you as far as the um, Fed information. So on the website, you know, you can go through and <clears throat> this Fed website, I can, uh, I'll put it in the link here so people can, I mean, in the chat, so everyone can have this. It's a slow moving chart, obviously. Um, <clears throat> but basically, you know, it gives you the, this is the, uh, balance sheet that we know of, uh, the public one. So you can see, at least, you know, since June 1st, they haven't, you know, they've actually put on assets, not a ton, according to this, but, um, you know, basically they are not you know, running balance sheet off at this point, you know, if you can see that. So basically we, since uh, June, you know, flatlined and made a bump up and, <clears throat> So that was kind of interesting. Um, what I really was looking at, and this is not the easiest website to navigate, but I did want to pull up. So this is a statistical release from the Fed. 
about their <coughs> their their balances. So what this does is shows you you know change from the weekend. So basically, like the delta of what things are doing. So you can see there wasn't much going on. You know, securities held out right. You know, um, this is in millions. <laughs> so you know, a net of <coughs> six billion here. But for the week June twenty third, a net of nine hundred eighty six billion. So that's treasury treasury securities here. You know, 600 billion uh, bonds, you know, 500 billion mortgage-backed securities, 381 billion. That's a that's a net change um, for sorry um, for their balance sheet. So very interesting. I'm not you know I'm, I'm still trying to get my head around this. I'm tracking this. It's released on a weekly basis. So. Obviously, nothing you know real time, but you know at least you can see um, you know based off of the other chart, and you know this really surprised me. You know, I mean, this makes perfect sense. You know, if they're buying, you know, if they're buying all these treasury securities, why you know the ten year would you know fluctuate like it did. So we we look at the ten year. You know, after the Fed announcement, you know, we got we were up at. A high of 348. So we're almost down, you know, 311. And we, we got down to, you know, basically three here. <clears throat> so, you know, I'm not sure exactly what's going on with the Fed. Uh, you know, based off of the chart, they're obviously not getting rid of anything at this point. You know, I thought they would, you know, starting in June, uh, not be buying stuff, but this is kind of painting a, a, a lot different picture. So, um, you know, going forward, we're going to monitor. I'll be monitoring this uh, like on a weekly basis. So it end, the week ends on Wednesday, so it's published on Thursday. Um, so you can pull that up. So I thought that was real interesting. Wanted to bring it to everyone's attention. Not sure what's going on. These numbers don't really line up with, you know, what, <clears throat> what was said uh, from the Fed. So... Would be uh, interesting if there was any anybody, anybody who predicts that. <laughs> yeah. You know, th this is looking back a week. It's very interesting. I've looked at it before, but it's kind of hard to read, so I don't yeah. look at it that much. But you know, uh, but um, you know, like the uh, like the website that predicts the Fed funds rate. There, it'd be interesting to see if there's a somebody that predicts what's going to happen the next week or the next two weeks, right? Right. Are they really going to roll off? Because these numbers, according to what they're saying, should be negative. Right. Right. I mean, even this, this is like- How long do you think I should get those scores out? How long does it take? Okay. Um, sorry, I gotta mute someone. Yep, I think I muted you, Sadir. You can unmute yourself, sorry. Yeah, I, uh, no, I'm here, but I, I was done. I, I just didn't yeah. be negative. I, I mean, I would, ex this I would, wouldn't really surprise me, you know, like they're, you know, like minimal amount, but this is like a ridiculous amount. I mean, this is in millions of dollars. So, um, yeah, this wouldn't surprise me, but, you know, I saw this and I, I no idea what, what <laughs> you know, so I think we got to monitor this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh, technically it's supposed to be running off. Um, but this is painting a different picture. So thanks, Adir. Hey, I've got a question for you. Uh, yeah. By the way, thanks for this kind of analysis. I think it's real interesting. This is, I think this is one of the stealthier. Uh, Pocket books that the uh, Fed has uh, kind of kept uh, out of the limelight. So and I don't, they, they probably have a reason for doing that. Right. Uh, I don't know. The, I, I'm wondering who, but the question I, was gonna, I forgot to ask was, if the, the Fed is going to get rid of some of the balance sheet here or sell some of these, who are they going to sell them to? 
foreign yeah. country, foreign countries. I mean, didn't they just have an auction that didn't go super well just like a couple of days ago? Yeah, they had a two year and a five year that were abysmal. So, yeah, I've been bringing that point up a lot. I mean, you know, who who wants to buy this you know debt? Um, I, I have no idea. You now I'm sure there's some like insurance actuaries and you know they're saying like the foreign um, the foreign buyers is, is dried up. Um, but, but don't you know, they let it run off? Isn't that what they say? The balance sheet run off. So you know they buy treasuries and stuff, and they they've been buying them for a decade. And what they do is these things come to maturity and they let them run off and that any profit they make has to be returned to the U.S. Treasury. And, um, the, you know, they just don't buy more with the proceeds is what I thought the primary way of reducing the balance sheet. I'm not a Fed expert, but I, yeah. I thought that, that you know, they, they, they may not actively sell what's on their balance sheet, but they let it run off. In other words, it hit maturity yeah. and expired. Yeah, well, yeah, I know there's a lot of deal, like there's dealers involved with the, um, with the auctions and like they got put, you know, a lot of those holdings like, for that two year we get, got sent back to the dealers. So the, I guess they have to eat them. But I, yeah, I'm not sure, you know, if what this is exactly saying, you know, whether, you know, they had a bunch of things expire and they just, you know, bought, a, you know, a ton more. Um, you know, <laughs> instead of, you know, like letting things really run off. I mean, the, the, the chart is telling us that nothing's run off so far. Yeah, um, I agree. So maybe, you know, this is everything that expired and, you know, they just re-upped, you know, <laughs> um, but it was a lot, obviously, uh, you know, a lot more than the, the previous week or, you know, I'm sure the week before that, but maybe this was like a big expiration and, you know, they just uh, re-upped everything, which kind of drove the market a lot, you know. Who gets but, hurt if they let things run off to like get back to, if they let things seriously just start running off, who would be hurt by that? Um, I, I yeah. think it, it, like if they're not re-upping purchases, then those treasury markets are going to be like the canary in the coal mine, you know, like where there's no bid, you know, there's very minimal bids. So that'll drive yields up. Does it hurt banks or brokerages or, or other countries, feds? Uh, that's, that's kind of, I'm, I'm totally ignorant on kind of how that, how that would work. As far as like if they're not buying anymore, if they're just letting them run off, right, right. Somebody's somebody's been benefiting by them for them buying all these bonds and securities and mortgage backed securities for decades, like Sadir said. So yeah. the whoever has been benefiting, whoever that is, and I'm not sure who it is, would be the ones that would be negatively affected if the Fed stopped buying them. So the Fed's propping up equities by buying all these mortgage bank securities i'm not sure that that they're, is a... they're driving like the you know they're controlling you know basically like the debt market and the rates through these measures right you know you can you can <clears throat> if, if they're you know bidding up all all the treasuries they're going to keep the rates low right so if they're no longer like they're supposed to, no longer doing that, um, then the rates are going to really spike, and that hurts almost everyone. You know, so the cost of capital <clears throat> will go up for companies, for people. I mean, your credit card. You know, if you if you don't pay it off, <laughs> you know that all that your car loans. You know, get, getting a new car loan, a new mortgage loan. Those. Is, you know, spiked quite a bit. And those are all driven by rates. So, you know, what they're doing is, you know, they've been keeping these late, these rates artificially low, you know, through this kind of measure. So this, so this, this um, mechanism that the Fed's been using is, is basically kind of like a steroid uh, interest rates on for steroid pill for interest rates. Yep. 
Okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. Yeah, when the in, when they keep interest rates low, this I do know it in indirectly boosts the stock market because large sums of money chasing higher yield flows into the stock market because the rates on uh, treasuries and bonds are so low you can't make a return so that free floating money out there in hedge funds and banks and all that goes into the stock market creating a net buying situation making the stock market go up so the fed indirectly supports the stock market that way when they raise rates the reverse happens right that money flows out of the stock market right. also when they raise rates of the cost of for the consumer mortgages, uh, car loans, uh, all that goes up and spending therefore has to come down because people are paying more, you know, uh, to purchase things, right? Yeah, the, the monthly cost goes you know, way up. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. This, so this was, a, I'm sorry if I keep putting in, but I'm gonna just stay right on the path here. So this technique is is really an alternative method as opposed to going to negative interest rates. Would that be a fair statement? Um, negative interest rates are the extreme of this, right? Yeah. We never went to negative interest rates, but things so got so bad in Japan and in Europe that they they were doing they were increasing their balance sheet like this, but they also reduced the equivalent of their Fed funds rate to um, negative, right? So yeah. ECB was negative till just re recently. Right? Yeah, the, the rates that they said, you know, that's a different lever. Um, these are like open market, um, you know, operations where, where they're exchanging securities and credit and stuff like that. Like the, the rates are, you know, like a, a different lever but you know they have both those tools, so they can use them together. So they were, you know, doing, you know, rate steroid with you know setting the you know the Fed fund rate at basically zero, <clears throat> while like buying all these securities to basically you know manipulate the long end, medium end of the curve. So things are getting lower and lower, but like the cost of capital now, you know, like you know companies would. You know, just take out loans at like you know whatever two percent and just buy back stock because it was you know worth it. You know, not anymore. You know, <laughs> with rates going up higher and higher, um, you know that it's going to be you know harder for them to do like expansions. I mean, it's going to cost more. So um, everything's going to cost more. If, you know, as the rates go up, and especially if they. Um, you know, basically release the lever on this treasury security market because that drives all interest rates. Yeah, one strategy I heard, um, for example, Elon Musk and a lot of rich people use when who have a lot of money in the stock market is, um, uh, and this is one of the things on um, uh, Capitol Hill they're complaining about, but they, um, they borrow they, they may not have a paycheck, right? So they borrow against their stock. Well, with rates really low, they borrow against, like Elon Musk borrowed like a billion dollars to live on uh, against his Tesla stock with really low interest rates, but Tesla stock appreciated so he could pay it back really easy. Yeah. And that, that's how a lot of people, when this, what rich people, not me, of course, but when, when the market's going up, that's actually how they uh, finance their daily living expenses. When rates are low and their, their stock portfolio is going up. Because they can get loans really cheap against a, uh, with the uh, stock portfolio as collateral. Right. It's a securities-based lending. <laughs> The more you have, the cheaper it is. Exactly. Yeah, I'm sure hedge funds are doing this to leverage, you know, returns and all that. So, 
Does that make sense, Dave? Thanks for both of you guys. Sorry, I was on mute there. Uh, that, that, that helped me a lot. Uh, me anyway, I appreciate that. Thanks. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm going to be diving more into this type of stuff. Um, you know, I'm tracking this on a weekly basis now. So I you know, found it through another uh, person I listened to. So we'll keep updating that. Uh, while we're talking feds, mind to, you know, look at the target for next week, next, it's a month, next month, sorry. Um, not much change uh, from last week. It was still pretty much baked in right now for 75. And then uh, September, which is quite a ways away. You know, that's kind of right now at a 50 um, point hike. So I think, you know, their goal is to have at least three by, you know, 3% by the end of the year. Um, you know, we'll see what happens. You know, I've heard a lot of people saying they're not going to be able to do this. Um, you know, I would think, you know, raising the rates and keeping the balance sheet would, would have been, in, you know, a softer way to do this, which, you know, kind of seems like what they're doing instead of a runoff. But, <clears throat> um, you know, what we'll the, what we'll the seed is, you know, what the communication comes out and hopefully they follow that, uh, you know, what they put out. Because, I mean, the last meeting we were expecting 50 and you know, like day, two days before, you know, they basically said, oh, we're going to do 75, you know, they just leak it. So hopefully it's not something like that. But, you know, I don't think inflation's going anywhere um, from all that I've read. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Okay, uh, Russell, so Russell State 8. So this one's pretty much doing the typical pattern. So we retest and then you know, we go down to our average move. So I think this is <clears throat> the one I'd key off of more since it's pretty much following a typical pattern. Um, you know, obviously key level, <coughs> excuse me, is that, uh, 1700, you know, getting below that uh, based off, you know, our charts. So, you know, the, the two kind of key things here would be, you know, the entry price, can it get above that? So that's 1800, uh, makes things nice and easy. And then uh, get below 1700, I, I think at that point, we'd make a run at the average move. Uh, that's going to be, you know, 16, 20, something like that. I just kind of say 1600-ish <clears throat> to make it uh, make it easy. Um, let's look at this chart here. All right. I don't even have the 1500 on there, hold on. If I can, <laughs> man, I can't get the 15 on there. All right, well, let's, we'll just do it like this then. Okay, so um, get my tool. So 19. The upper level of what it, where it currently is. You can see it was very strong support for a long time. It broke down in April. <clears throat> you know, had a had a retest here, in uh, in June. Um, you know, we're, right now we're still eighteen below eighteen hundred. So you know, we had that break below our key level of seventeen hundred, and you know, I think we're currently. Let me. Uh, Pull up current prices, you know, 38.10 and then, you know, 17.08. So we're right near those levels, basically right where we were, you know, last meeting. Despite all this volatility, we're pretty much right where we were um, <laughs> last week. Um, so, you know, just like that, I would 
key off that 1700 level, you know, is support. Um, you know, upside is 18, getting above that. So you can see we kind of got close to it. And, you know, <laughs> it turned around um, you know, pretty big. Um, and that was yesterday. So that, that's what I'd really be keying on that 1700 level. Um, the EMAs on these charts, you know, they're providing pretty strong resistance here. Um, you know, here, even here, you know, it broke above, didn't get much higher. This was, you know, a Fed day here where everything just reversed. So, <clears throat> you know, that, that's kind of close to that 1800. So I'd just go off the 1800 um, as far as that. And we'll think SPX, you know, 4,000, uh, not really close to that. So, okay. Um, I guess the last thing kind of thing, you know, just pull up like the curve. You can see down below here, you know, we were <clears throat> had a nice, uh, nice curve, <laughs> uh, kind of typical, but you can see the rates here from like one year ago, we're pretty much zero out to one year. So now, you know, you can see we have, uh, you know, they're definitely targeting that 10 year. It's a key one that they're looking at, but you can see that's lower and the seven lower than the 30, uh, and lower, lower. So not until you get to the two year or something lower than the 10 year. So that's definitely what they're targeting. And I think it's critical to watch that. You know, showed a chart of, <clears throat> you know, we had a spike up to three, four, eight or something like that. So now we're back down to 3.1, but I think that's the key and you know they're definitely targeting that one. You can just tell based off of these rates here that you know the ten years what a lot of people look at. So I think that's <clears throat> kind of what you should look at too. You know, it's slightly inverted. Um, I think less so than last week, but I think this whole chart kind of explains what happened. So we'll have to see if this kind of thing you know it's just a one time where they had so many things expiring, where <laughs> you know they had to you know buy new stuff, um, or if it's going to be more like this, or even possibly negative. I think negative, <clears throat> we definitely notice it in the equity market. So um, I think that's it for this. So I'll open up to comments or questions on the market overall. Very interesting, guys. We need to track uh, Dr. I'll take a look as well. I like that uh, fed sheet, but I've looked at it before. It's, it's kind of hard to read. Oh, everything on this whole site is very hard. They make it hard to read. Um, so, yeah, gold stock. <laughs> yeah, uh, Dave, just one comment for anybody that's got uh, SPX trades or buy trades. I think the dividend the distribution is tomorrow, I think. I was just looking for it and I had a hard time finding it. <laughs> But I think uh, dividends come out on the uh, on the uh, S State Street, you know, ETFs, um, like tomorrow, uh, if not Friday, Friday, but I think it's tomorrow. So be beware if you've got, you know, uh, and it's cash settled. So you know, the morning thereafter, I think. So just if you got trades out there, just know that there's a dividend out there. I can't find when it is exactly or how much, but it's usually over a dollar. So. <clears throat> Yeah, they usually have like the X date, but they don't have it here. Yeah, you probably have to go to the, um, the actual website for. Uh, yeah, I, went to State, I went to State Street, but I, I, I didn't. I was trying to do it while we're on the air here. And I gave yeah. up because I went to stay tuned with what you were saying. Um, what, one other interesting tidbit that I, I read the other day uh, about a uh, huge, uh, this is a, my. Dick, Add to volatility at the end of the week here, or the day after they close what they said. But the, the article is saying that Morgan Stanley has this huge fund that they have set up a couple of years ago where they use uh, option overlays, overlays to hedge it off. So it holds all the fan favorites in the, uh, in the actual fund. And then it, it sells SPX put spreads above and uh, put spreads below 
And uh, what they were saying was that the put spread below is uh, the low strikes are going to be have a good chance to be in the money here, which means bad things for the fund. And they said last quarter, there was a big uh, market move the day that this fund rebalanced. By rebalancing, they mean they got to cash settle all their, <laughs> all, all everything they have in there. And uh, they were, they being whoever was looking at why there was a uh, volatility that day came back to this particular fund and it's going to rebalance again, like tomorrow or as soon as, you know, June is over, which is tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm just they said, well, watch out for extra extra volatility, and we already have high volatility. So, oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's not that's not going anywhere. So yeah, so there we are. I uh, just wanted to let everybody know that about uh, things. Kind of, it's not a triple witching thing, but maybe it is a triple witching thing. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, All right. Thanks. Thanks. Interesting. I hadn't seen that. Um, Hey, Josh, yeah, if I could um, maybe just pick up on what Sadir said last week about that PCE number. Um, oh, yeah. I could just, can I, sh can I show the, uh, share the screen? Just yeah. to yeah, so, oh, go, um, okay. Um, that number is due out. That comes out at 8.30 tomorrow. And going into um, the number last month, the market had rallied a little bit and then rallied strong on the number. Um, so it'll be out before we open tomorrow. Uh, okay. Let me. Those are definitely key up, to uh, watch. <laughs> Any inflation. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. At no, this point. No question. Um, let's see. Can Can you see my screen at this point? No. Uh, there we go. Okay. Pulling it up. Uh, hold on. Let me. Um, but. Yeah, I, I just wanted to pull up the here, here, here the number. Can you see it now? Yep. Okay. So at at the bottom, you know, this is basically the the uh, five point eight through six point three. That's the number since last December, and and basically the number I think it's reported without food and energy. So here here was the report last month, which was May twenty seventh, and you can see CNBC they just reported you know, without food and energy. So just an FYI for that tomorrow. I've been looking around for expectations, haven't mm -hmm. seen anything. Again, uh, a month ago, the market was kind of strong going into the number, rallied considerably. Actually, you know, the Thursday before the number, uh, the market had closed on its highs. In some instances, gapped up on the number last month, rallied hard, then kind of went sideways for darn near a week. And then we got a, into another bear trend. So, Sudhir, I think to your credit, you know, that is, uh, that's, that's the short-term number that's going to, you know, probably dictate the direction of the market going forward. Um, Josh, you know, you were talking about the Russell. One, one uh, disconnect between Russell, SPX, and NASDAQ now, and, and you get into some of the uh, ETFs as well. What, what I find interesting, the state eights, the average length of those moves is often 32 days. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we're, we're well beyond that in SPX and Russell at this point, um, but or not Russell and SPX and NASDAQ, uh, but the Russell has only been in state eight for, for 12 days. So, right. um, you know, where, uh, as you said, we, we may, you know, get a roll down into that 1500 level remains to be seen, but, um, you know, just a couple of things. I think PCE tomorrow, and then you know who's going to win out in terms of time in state eight, Russell or SPX and Nasdaq. Uh, mm -hmm. Just a couple of thoughts. Hey, so Joe, do you know when we get the, the next uh, GDP kind of print for whether it's an update from past quarter or the future? Yeah. Do you know when? Yeah. That Josh and I were talking about that because, again, Josh, to his credit, uh, you know, I think the day after the last quarter, it's going to be the end of July, Dave. So whether that's the 27th, 28th, somewhere in there. But I think the week after we got, um, you know, the negative first quarter report, Josh was talking about, hey, if we get another negative report, we're in a recession. So it's the end of July. I'm not sure exactly what day, but um, yeah. 27, 28 comes to mind. Yeah, and they updated the the – Q1, it was 
slightly lower than what they had said. So that was the update. It was slightly lower, <clears throat> I think, um, 1.6 versus a 1.5 drop. So that, that was updated this morning. That's the only thing I've seen GDP wise. So thanks for that. Uh, hmm? What's that, Dave? I just said thanks to both of you. I think uh, I'm not surprised that it's small, you know, incrementally downgrade to previous. I mean, they'll do anything to try to not make a be a recession. So if they can tweak the earlier estimates down, it's something easier to beat, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyone else before I jump into earnings real quick? Not a lot here. <laughs> All right, so this is the earnings trade tracker that I'm you know, using so far. We have uh, four confirmed. They're all uh, bullish pre-runners, as you can see in this column here. Um, so I think this one came out today. It's, was it AXP? Yeah, I think this one came out today. Um, and then Capital One came out earlier. You know, the earnings state here was 728, but it's got changed and confirmed to 721. So, you know, we have, I didn't put this trade in yet, the AXP from this morning, but the other three trades so far, just so you can get an idea, you know, uh, Capital One, we got in yesterday. So, uh, you know, that's down 135. Uh, J JP Morgan, we got in uh, the 22nd, that's slightly up. And then we have one close, Travelers actually close uh, above that 25% profit. So that got in on the 22nd, was out two days later. <clears throat> this was also a study, you know, during this time. So you know, that's kind of something that I'll be tracking is, okay, does it pop in the, another area that we're looking at? So. That's the only one that I saw in the, in the studies also. So that's just a quick update, obviously, you know, up 33 bucks on three trades as of right now, you know, with a down day today. So, <laughs> you know, just be careful, you know, these bear market rallies, <clears throat> you know, they're, they're, they're tricking a lot of people, you know, I, I think that's currently what <clears throat> we experienced, but you have to wait and see on those resistance levels. So any uh, questions or comments on that? All right, uh, Sudhir, uh, do we have, you get 15 minutes to do this, do you think? <laughs> oh yeah, I don't think it'll take very long. Okay, yeah, Sudhir is gonna share some back testing uh, that he has done and Thought it'd be worthwhile for the group. So, floor is yours, Sadir. Thank you. Uh, can you see my Delphian screen? Yep. Yep. Okay. So I'm showing the SPX, and uh, I'll just go over. Um, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, real quick, I've mentioned this on the call before that. Um, Ages ago, Sean and I did this back test, which was, oh, where did it go? Um, where the index is uh, SPY, DIA, IWM, and QQQ dropped three to 15% in five days. And you can see, I did this, but you can't see it on this one, but this were done in 2020. And this works 90% of the time or better. And I had been doing them for a long time. And then when I got bearish in January, after I came back from my ski trip, I stopped doing them. And um, uh, so I thought last week, well, why don't I try the reverse? Now bear calls have never tested well in the Delphian system when you go back a long ways because you know, the Fed has been propping up the market since 2009. So uh, what I did was I did, um, let's do this. 
Um, I did, here it is, the big four, the big four, I just put into a stock list, the big four ETFs, DIA, IWM, QQQ, and uh, SPOT. But this back test is only done back to November 19th, 2021. Why November 19th? Um, if it'll come up for me. November 19th is when the NASDAQ peaked. So by my definition, the, the Dow and the um, S&P peaked on January 4th, but the NASDAQ peaked here on November 19th. That's the peak close and that's the peak intraday on the 22nd. So this run is, uh, the trade rule is a bear call spread, 30 days expiration at the upper standard deviation. And uh, I get out at 80% of the initial credit. And this particular one was done with a 200% of initial credit stop loss. And you can see it has a 92% win rate, 2.19 profit factor, and over, what is that, 74 trades populated during the eight months, which is, uh, you know, eight months is 34 weeks. So back to November roughly. So uh, if you assume we're in a bear market like I do and that the Fed is gonna do what they say they're gonna do, which is continue to tighten and we continue to be in a bear market, this will work. And in fact, because of this test, I entered a bear call spread on the queues on Monday, which is working out just fine. Uh, all four big, index uh, for big ETFs were up more than 3% last week. So I could have done all four, but I decided to just do one to see how it goes. And I set up an alert uh, to inform me when that happens. Now I also did the same thing on the Dow 30 list. And uh, I had a little trouble here with my stop loss, but when I got the stop loss to 100% of max risk, you can see on the Dow 30 stocks, it also tested 90% with a 2.77 profit factor. Once again, it's a bear call spread 30 days out at the upper standard deviation. And um, over on the Dow 30 in those eight months, once again, just since November 19th, uh, well over 800 trades populated. So I did an alert on that. Uh, I did it also on Tesla, just to try it. Tesla populated rising three to 15% in five days, 26 times. And this bear call spread uh, was successful 92% with a profit factor of 24.8. I tried to do it on the entire liquid option list. <laughs> it's too many trades. Yeah. You get over the thousand <laughs> trade limit. It's really hard to do, at least with the access that I have. Josh, you may have better, but even you know, limiting it to one month at a too many trades, and uh, you know, I just gave up. It's just too much for. I, I think you would have to do it on your end to do that. Yeah. Uh, but my point being that a, uh, a really simple trade that is, should work 90% of the time. Now, Josh kind of has maybe pointing out that the Fed is not doing what they said they're going to do, but assuming the Fed does what they say they're going to do, and the market, which will require the market to go lower, this test at over 90% going back to what I consider the start of the bear market, which is November 19th of 2021. Uh, does, does it make sense what I've said here? Does to me. Yeah, I kind of said too, could you? What Dave, we couldn't hear you. 
I was just agreeing that I thought it was a good idea. So good job. Yeah. Yeah, definitely interesting. I like how you flipped the uh, from the drop to the rise. <laughs> yeah, I just said if they happen to rise in the bear market, which they did last week, all four indexes rose more than three percent last week. This is just the reverse of dropping in a bull market. There's yeah. a bear call because bear call spreads. I've tried them before. They don't test very well, right? right. But the market has changed, so. They test really good. You, you place it out at the uh, out at the standard deviation, thirty days out. Collect, uh, 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 you know, um, target eighty percent of the credit, and mm. wins ninety percent of the time. Mm. Hey, Sadir, you've talked about you know strike prices, uh, you know, quite a bit throughout this bear market um, at the standard deviation. Uh, which is the short strike. Any idea what the delta of those, of that strike has been? Or, or, you know, the actual, is there an average credit for that bear spread that you're taking in? Um, I did not do that kind of analysis to see the correlation between delta and, uh, and the standard deviation. Um, I can tell you, let me look, um, on Monday, I used the standard deviation in the Delphian system, right? So right. Uh, yep. on, on uh, Monday, let me just pull it up. So, okay, Monday, the standard deviation based on Monday morning, which would have been Delphian system updated for Friday the 24th, the standard deviation told me to put the short on the queues at 315. And so I made, I, I like them five wide. So I, I, the long is at 320. And I collected um, 85 cents. Okay. Per trade. Thanks for that. That's, that that was the other question. I wasn't sure, you know, what, what the width your spreads were. So five wide, got it. Okay. I, I like them five wide. Not, not the test is just one strike, but anyway, I do them five wide and uh, I collected 85 cents. Now what the average of the credit, I didn't, I didn't look at what the Delta was because I just used the standard deviation. Now what the average yep. credit is going to be over time. You know, I, I, I didn't do that either. I'd, I'd have to track it. Right. But you know, that's what just a good idea here. Yeah, I collected eighty-five cent. Now, of course, I did more than one spread because I like to have my risk at around a thousand dollars. So I ended up with um, a two, and uh, you know, I'm, it's de it's declining. By the way, the average days was eight. You can see on the screen eight days um, to before it hits the eighty percent. Yeah, that's a great test, and I'm glad you shared it. Definitely something interesting, and I think we can we can test some more of that. I think, especially you know, in that timeline, you know, since the market basically rolled over and has been rolling over. Right. Yeah. So hopefully, um, people find it useful, and um, it's a really easy trade to set a really easy back test to do. All you're doing is price change. Three to fifteen percent. Yeah. It runs, and then you click on the box and hit daily alert. And it'll just alert you. And uh, like I said, I did the whole Dow thirty. It was it didn't take very long. The liquid option list is it, it, it's not it just populates too many trades. Yeah. But um, <laughs> you know um, that won't run for me anyway. And, uh, but hey, it, it's real easy trade and income generating. Well, that's a great idea, Sadir. Does anyone have uh, questions on that? No one else? All right. Well, thank you, Sadir. Mm -hmm. Definitely appreciate your continued uh, involvement and presentation. So thank you for that. Um,
I think that's it for the meeting. Did anyone have questions or comments before we wrap up? All right. Well, thank you all. We'll do it again next week. Thanks, Josh. Have a good thank week, you. everybody. Thanks.